This is 7.3 volume again, but this time we're covering the shell method. Now, the shell method is also used to find the volume of a solid of revolution. Um, and these formulas are a little bit different, okay? It has a formula here for horizontal um, axis of revolution or line of revolution. You have the formula 2 pi rho of y times h of y dy, okay? And then for down here, the vertical axis of revolution, you have that the volume is 2 pi rho of x h of x dx, okay? Now, I want you to note that rho is just the difference between the region and the line or axis of revolution, okay? And how do you, a difference is not commutative. So it will matter which is in the front and which is in the back, okay? And that I'm gonna go ahead and discuss here. So here's a picture if you have a horizontal axis of revolution and you're in dy, vertical rectangles, this is what it looks like, okay? So you've got um, some function here, okay? And this is the region that's been created. Now, in order to revolve this region around this, um, axis of revolution, you're going to have to take the height, which is the height of this rectangle, okay, which is usually going to be given by that function there, so you'll have this information, dy is just dy, you'll have your bounds from the lowest y value to the highest y value, so these guys are all good, the only one that's left is rho of y, okay, now rho of y will for this particular problem is going to be the difference between where your rectangle is and the line of revolution, okay? So in this particular case, notice that the rectangles are above the line of revolution. My region is above the line of revolution. So in this case, the row would be the top minus the bottom. It's actually always the top minus the bottom when it comes to integrating with respect to y. Okay, but one thing you need to know is that y represents where the rectangle is at any moment in time. So it can't be a particular y, it has to be left general, okay? A is the actual value of the horizontal line of revolution, okay? So if the region is above the line of revolution, like we have here, then what you will use for row of y is the y representing that the rectangles are above the line of revolution a. And a in this case, if it's the x-axis, um, then a would be zero. If it's the line y equals seven, well then a would be seven, okay? Now, con conversely, if the region is below the line of revolution, which I don't have here, that would be like if I had a piece of graph down here then I would have to take that line value, whatever it is, minus a y to represent the rectangles down here, okay? So it says, no, y represents the region or the rectangles in that region. A represents the value of the horizontal line of revolution. Also notice the rectangles are parallel to the line of revolution in the shell method, which is different, right? Here, you have the line of revolution horizontal, and because it's dy, the rectangles are also horizontal. So that's what's different from um, the method. Now, the reason why we have the shell method, it might look a little bit more convoluted, um, is basically to make things easier on ourselves because, because of this now, now we have a choice. So when we're asked to find, if, as long as the directions don't specifically tell me to use shell method or use disk method, then essentially I have a choice. I have a choice which one I wanna use. And I promise you integrating with respect to X is the easiest one to do in most cases. We may run into a problem where integrating with respect to X is a little bit more work, okay? But for the most part, Integrating with respect to x is the preferred one, okay? The preferred uh, variable of integration. So because of that, it really doesn't matter whether my 
uh, axis of revolution or my line of revolution is horizontal or vertical because if I want to integrate with respect to X, I have to use vertical rectangles. And if my horizontal, if my axis of, of a revolution is horizontal, well then those rectangles would be perpendicular and I would be using disk method. Whereas if my line of revolution is vertical and I want to use vertical rectangles, then that means they're parallel and I would have to use the shell method. Okay. So the purpose of them talking about the shell method is so that you really do have that choice later as you go along, okay? And there are some problems in the review and on the test where there is no specificity. I hope I pronounced that right. But there's nothing that tells you which method to use. It just says find the volume, okay? And in problems like those, you have the choice. So for a vertical axis of revolution, it's the same sort of thing. So now you have vertical rectangles, right? So this is the one we really like to see. So you have your bounds A and B, which are those bounds there. Your height is usually going to be that function value. Um, if, it's, if it's lifted up above, then you might have to subtract whatever this function value is as well, okay? But you do need the height of the rectangle in the region. Now, the P of X is going to come from this here. So, and it's actually not that, that's an error. It's the difference between the region and the line of revolution. So, it's actually this, okay? So, remember, the X, the variable, represents the region, and the number represents whatever number value this vertical line is at, okay? So in this case, you're always going to do the right minus the left, the larger minus the smaller, right? So if the region is to the right of the line of revolution, like we have here, then I would have the X for the region minus A for that line of revolution. If it were the other way around, if I had a graph over here, then I would have to do that value A minus X for the region, okay? I'm going to stop here just to kind of let that sink and then we're going to continue on the next page with um, our examples.